26 days till the spring game. Just remind y'all, in case any of you forgot, have amnesia. All right, big day for us. Um, we're going to have the, uh, just so y'all know, the Baker Mayfield will will do uh, his presentation at halftime uh, that day. And as opposed to after the game, I think maybe it was discussed uh, that it would be. And then, uh, as y'all know, it's a huge day for us for recruiting. You know, uh, we're going to need all of our fans and going to have to uh, fill that place up, man. Bring your families and um, have a good old time. Yeah, so, he's, he's got, uh, to me, in my opinion, he has those special qualities. Um, he's uh, very humble and um, he's not loud and braggadocious and you know making any kind of proclamations he doesn't need to and he's he does it with his work his competitiveness his toughness obviously he has street credibility with the players because of what he has done um at a high level and then all, all he's done since he's been here is work and uh, he inspires he encourages he leads by example uh takes responsibility takes responsibility even when it's not his fault uh, like the good ones will do and again, just brings out the best in people. So uh, both sides of the ball, he's he's been great. He's been, like I said before, he's been a pro in every way. Yeah, you know, Billy's a, a guy. I I get why he was played. I played three positions last year as a true freshman. Incredibly talented, great instincts, uh, tremendous skill set, um, uh, great toughness, very intelligent. Um, can do a lot of things, and we're just trying to get him to be really good at one thing. And sometimes when you do too much too soon, you know, everything's neutralized, all your ability, your instincts, your intelligence. And most of the time, that's that way for freshmen. you got to be that dude, uh, like a generational kind of a person, um, to uh, at any position to, uh, you know, pick up it, pick up everything right away. And um, I think he was for injury and things of that nature. He's had to, he had to be forced in action at different spots. And uh, so we're really trying to have him focus uh, at safety and uh, put him in position there where uh, he can play in space and use his ability, uh, cover a lot of uh, a grass and uh, play his man technique, all those types of things. And he's really uh, – he's had a really good uh, start. You know, we're third finish through spring ball after today's practice, just like that. And uh, – you know, don't have, we got eight left and counting, you know. So uh, every every moment matters, uh, whether it's meeting, it's walkthrough, it's uh, indie, it's, uh, you know, team separate, it's, you know, good on good. And uh, Billy, Billy's hungry. I love, he's he's got great maturity to him, great focus. He's hard on himself, very demanding on top of being, you know, really skilled. So expect, uh, you know, huge things from him and, and whether you know how you know how he finishes up the spring, going into the summer, going into the next fall, you know his development, which has been going trending, uh, the needle moving in the right direction, will allow us to have some position flexibility with some other guys. I I don't I don't know if it's um, that's a great question. I think I think there's more intricacies on on uh, just listening to the question and, and really thinking it through. Offenses are. Are, are much different now than they were then, um, obviously. Um, whether it's just the no huddle or all the moving parts, um, I think it's probably a little uh, more difficult for a young person to know both of those systems, both sides of the ball. You know, you see more, more and more kids that are playing only one side in high school. And back in the day, you, you know, the best players stayed on the field. They didn't leave the field. And um, so probably less exposure on the front end coming in, and um, and probably coach is just getting lazy, <laughs> uh, not taking advantage. I don't know. Um, you know, when you got special players, you know that's a it's a great thing to have. For us right now, we're just trying to help a guy like a Billy just to become you know you know dominant at one position, get him to that point. And to me, that's what when you see have seen people do that, whether it's Chris Canny or you know or R. W. McCorders, right? Yeah, um, you know they established themselves on one side of the ball first, and then um, and then you found ways for them to continue to help the team. So we'll always be open to that. Um, you know, whether it's on one side of the ball and playing them at multiple positions, or again having a guy that really has that unique skill set, really special skill set to play on both sides, I'll always be open. You know, for that. I mean, again, he's not. 
he's not up here and down here and up here and down here. Um, he, he shows up with a consistent mindset, uh, knows how to respond, can more quickly take a new language and translate it to what he understands in regards to football 101 and should, which should expedite you know his development uh, schematically. He's playing with a, uh, I don't know, he's got a cast like right here. So it's, he's immobile. So that's a tough thing for any uh, DB type position, you know, cause you're in man or zone and tackling and all those, and getting off of blocks and all the perimeter screens, but love his mindset, love his attitude. He's been really good. Uh, he's a team, really good teammate. Just has a maturity about him. Like you would hope, you know, a lot of the transfer guys do. And um, he's, uh, has showed up with here with no entitlement whatsoever and has completely bought into what we've asked him to do. So really been pleased. That's Those are the things that we hoped that we would get from all of them. And uh, But he's done a great job with that. And, um, again, he can play in space, got a really good skill set too. He's a tough kid and uh, plays fast. And uh, like I said, he's a, he's got one arm tied behind his back right now, but has it's, it's done a, a really good job. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It reminds me of just being around my own sons and uh, knowing, you know, what their dreams are um, and uh, watching them as little kids, you know, pretending they were the Mark Clayton, uh, you know, and some of those guys that we had some amazing players. And um, so it's, uh, it's a reminder to me, you know, that these are uh, people's kids and um, they're on their journey. It's not all about just winning. And um, there's more to it than that. But, uh, you know, you can help facilitate all their dreams on and off the field. And uh, so for me, it's a reminder, too, his dad's around here. Uh, <laughs> he's got a statue out here out front. And it's a reason I was afforded the opportunity originally to come in the first place uh, because of their family. And, uh, but what I love about Drake Stoops, you never know, one of the most humble, hardworking, tough. Uh, he's an over... Uh, he's a high performer. He's a, he over delivers with everything and uh, on and off the field. And, uh, you know, you've seen other young people in his position have a sense of entitlement and, uh, you know, want something for nothing. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, just, a, uh, just a great person, a great teammate. And, um, you know, thankful that he's, you know, on our squad and, uh, and he's a baller. The mind could, you know, you can't hear me. <laughs> I can scream all I want. And somebody allowed them to have music at practice. So I got I to gotta scream over. That was me. I, that was funny. It was like really like funny. I let them have music at practice. No, so I got I to gotta <laughs> try to be efficient. I can't be everywhere at once until that group over on the other field has got to hear me. Just trying to be efficient. Uh, maybe just those last reminders. And, of course, you lose your voice to a certain degree um, as well. So that's the story. No I'm not trying to be demonstrative or, you know, I'm in charge. Like, that's not who I am, um, but just trying to be efficient, make sure everybody can hear, and we're doing a good job of communicating and just reminders nonstop. But um, Kenai's doing terrific. Um, he's big, okay? He's really fast, and uh, he's got some great toughness to him. Hadn't played a whole lot of football, played a little bit as a true freshman. Uh, he's got a tremendous skill set, very talented, and... Um, He's a patient player. For young guys, usually one of the things that they don't have is patience, and so they get in a hurry with everything. And to be a really good corner, I mean, you got to play with great patience and your fundamentals and your technique. And uh, so Coach Veli's done a really good job with him thus far, and Kanai's worked really hard. He's actually, again, just through a few days, having doing a great job and giving us some competitive depth there. And uh, it's going to make us. He's going to make us better. You know, and he's going to stay healthy and. Uh, continue, you know, that uh, trend in the right direction. But uh, I really like where he is for a young guy that hasn't played a whole lot of football with his, not only his size, but his um, his fundamentals and his techniques and, um, and how hard he is on himself. He's a tough kid and uh, hard to satisfy. Yeah, I mean, you always hope that you, you recruit to that. And right now, um, just say, for example, you use Isaiah, because I don't want this to be uh, – looked at or you know, evaluated the wrong way, Isaiah came in and things were already established for a good while, foundationally in the program, I think, 
his first year might have been like 16. Well, you know, national championships already been won, played in multiple, uh, had multiple number one defenses in the country. So, you know, you, you could find a guy that could just do like that and everything else is already set, so to speak. So um, we'll see. You know, we didn't figure him out until, you know, he redshirted his first year and then played some backup safety his second year and he doesn't start his first game till his third year. He showed up, he's 6'4", and he's still freaky, but he had a lot of development to do. Like I said, it's a developmental game. In the fourth year, you know, you know, he wins the Budkiss and uh, first-team All-American and whatever. He's eighth pick in the draft. So, you know, that's just water in that bamboo. We've got plenty of guys that are very talented that just need some more watering. You know, there's a process to it. And right now, we're again, not to put the cart, you know, before the horse. We're, we're just trying to get them lined up right now. And... Um, find a position that they're at let alone playing multiple positions right now yeah um as far as the installation uh in typical fashion you you lay it out there and you have a pretty aggressive um installation pattern on paper and then you start uh, working and uh practicing and uh and you slow down a little bit and so for all the reasons you can go down, like whether you're somewhere and you're returning and you have a foundation set and you have a culture uh, and you have a lot of experience coming back, I've, that's how it always is. Or the flip side is when we're we're trying to learn. We, we've been watching these guys with, out of their helmets, uh, you know, in, in T-shirts and shorts for, you know, eight weeks. And now you get, who's in what jersey numbers? I'm calling them by their jersey, 26, 29, 1, 77. Who are these guys? And... Um, so not as never as fast as you want it to be installation wise, um, but we had an aggressive game plan and uh, just making adjustments as we go in typical fashion. And uh, at linebacker, uh, don't have great depth there. Um, I just want to make sure I got this down here. We have 12 returning starts at linebacker, uh, so not much experience there. Um, but it's a group that's really hungry. Um, we've got. We've got good enough players there to play at a really high level. We just got to get them in the right spots. They're on the bus right now. We got to get them in the in the right seats, and uh, and and see who can separate. You know, at the end of the day. So it's been a good uh, good first couple of days. So um, you want me to talk about? You want to ask about individual guys there, or well, just generally speaking? Yeah. Yeah, so between Trey and TD and uh, uh, Jaron and uh, Kobe and uh, my uh, East Texas 10, Kip, Kip, okay, Kip, Kip uh, that group. I think, is there anybody else? I think that's it for as far as new guys there. Um, again, they're, runner and hitter, they're runners and they're hitters. Um, really... Again, obviously, TD and Trey bring a lot of experience. They've played a lot of football, started a lot of football games, and have played at a high level. And um, so, you know, getting our packages, you know, together and things like that is where we're at with, with those guys and the young guys, just teaching them. There's a language barrier for everybody, but particularly that can stunt your growth as a, as a young player. You haven't played much football. And so the older guys have an advantage there, obviously, and the younger guys have been, again, very eager and have flashed have uh, shown some, uh, you know, the ability. And now we just got to make sure that we keep things simple for them, meet them where they're at and help them along. But I've been pleased with, with them as well. Well, I mean, <clears throat> obviously I have, you know, great experience over there and trying to foundationally help set some standards and um, be an additional set of eyes and ears and uh, blocking dummy and I'll do whatever you know that's my expectation everybody's the same way to to make things efficient everybody's got 20 hours a week right now and we've got to make the most use of those 20 hours and that's really my involvement reasoning is is because uh, I know what extra hats can do extra bodies extra voice and um try to get guys to shortcuts as quickly as possible from a development standpoint and learning standpoint and um, yeah, that's I love to do that. I love getting dirty and getting uh, dirt under my fingernails. That's a that's a good thing. It's a fun thing. Um, uh, early on, you know, Coach Snyder was over on the offense a lot. <laughs> uh, 
uh, but you know also did a great job of managing all of it you know whether you're managing uh, trainers and equipment people and so you're trying to make sure from a structural and organizational standpoint um, there's always little things to correct and make it better and so you got to be very mindful uh, and aware of of those things uh, really first and foremost and then um, and then secondly coaching making sure that you're coaching the, the efficiency of of the drills and uh, of the coaches themselves and what we're doing a lot of times they don't realize things and so you're just constantly to put notes and things of that nature but I would imagine it'd be like probably you know a normal 65 35 uh, at any particular practice um, well, I don't take any of it for granted and um, you know give your help when you need to but um, that's that's what I know um, intimately well and spend you try to spend you know quality time with the offensive guys off the field uh, meeting rooms and things of that nature too yeah we'll we'll figure that out as we continue to move forward and a lot of times that just it just depends on how the spring goes. You know, you got, uh, you know, you got your thoughts on, you know, what you're experienced with, and you know, our depth and development will determine that. But uh, it'll be a fun time, and everybody will be able to watch us and evaluate us in some kind of capacity. Uh, you know, running, hitting, catching, throwing, sacking, all those kind of things. So really, haven't haven't made a uh, a final decision with that. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.